<laughs> okay, I think we're on. How are we doing this evening? How are we doing? <laughs> okay, great. Um, you've all learned the claps. I'm going to teach you one thing. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. My name is Kingsley Waker, like Carl rightly mentioned. Um, I'm going to teach you one new uh, greeting. Yes. Um, you already know it's called, the, you guys could probably call it the fist bump, but in Lagos we call it chop knuckle. Now, the reason why I'm asking all of you to chop knuckle is because you've been here for about a week, um, on a going very intense workshops, uh, being in very serious meetings, talking about you know, the very important work that you do. So I want you to look to the person to your left and to your right and say, chop knuckle. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> chop knuckle. Chop knuckle. <laughs> 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 okay, all right, uh, give yourselves a round of applause for being such amazing participants here in Abidjan and for the amazing work that you do. My name is Kingsley, again, from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm the founder and editor of a platform called Africa on the Rise. Um, and what I do is pretty much propagate the positive changing realities of the continent. Um, why this is important is because I understand, and I've been com um, conversing with uh, a few of you here, I understand the tendency for you to, um, you know, because when you're working on such a very big project with a very big team spread across the continent and across the world. Sometimes you might get overwhelmed by the intensity of the work and you may not be able to relate the activities that you do with the impact that you want to see. You know, that can be a problem. You might get discouraged, you might get depressed, but I'm here to remind you that whatever result you're able to achieve is very important. It's not lost in the air. You know, I was having a conversation with someone who's in uh, uh, reforestation, you know, and then he goes into a field where it's barren, and then he is about to get sad. And I said, look, if it's one tree, it means something. And I'm going to share with you uh, a story um, very quickly. Um, but before I do that, I want to remind you of some of the things that you probably already heard that emphasize or remind you that, look, Africa, rural Africa is actually developing. Um, a lot of you probably work in the agri agricultural sector, so we're very familiar with uh, um, this statistics that talks about the fact that there's bound to be increase in demand for food produce, and Africa is pretty much, uh, you know, in the right uh, space to provide that supply, right? So already you can see that the work you're doing in agriculture is very, very important, and it's time very, very much to rural development. Um, ICT as well, you know, mobile penetration. Uh, right now, we're looking at over s about 750 million um, SIM connections on the continent. That number is about to grow to a billion by 2025. Um, if you look at examples with M-Pesa in Kenya, if you look at how that has been able to transform digital payments, even agriculture, you know, I think that's a key success. So a lot of these things also tie back to the work that you do. These are enablers for um, the success factors or the metrics that you're looking for. Um, and then again, this is one that's very exciting to me. It's the Free Trade Act. Um, this is something that we've been working on for a couple of years now. And uh, thankfully, in July this year, an operational phase was actually announced. Um, this is very important because I'm sure some of you flew about 20 hours to get here from an African country. Anybody, 20 hours flight just to get here exactly. <laughs> you didn't enjoy that very much, did you? Exactly. You know, so th um, the, Africa, the Free Trade Act is also going to help to address all of those issues because sometimes really it's just really two business people not being able to reach an agreement because of restrictions from one country to the other. You know, so this is going to help to tackle that. And also, this Free Trade Act is already poised to um, increase Africa's GDP to about $15 trillion you know, by 2060. So it's very, very um, good. Now, uh, if you look on the screen, you see some logos that you're very familiar with. You met some of these innovators here at the conference. Uh, we Fly, Agri, Africa Mart, Food Hubs. You know, so these are really um, interesting innovations, innovators, entrepreneurs from, across, from the continent here um, who also work in the agri space. Now, the lady you see um, to your right, yes, to your right, <laughs> her name is Pili Hussein. Now, why I am telling you her story is, to 
So also motivate you with the work that you do. Now, she's 60 years old in this picture. This picture was taken last year. Um, but her story is very inspiring. 30 years ago, about 30 years ago, she ran away from an abusive relationship. Um, when I say ran, I mean she, she ran. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being literal. I mean, she didn't just, uh, no, she literally ran, and she ran to um, the mines in Tanzania. Um, now, she got to the mines because she was looking for work, and she had heard that um, the stones, precious stones from the mines were selling for a thousand shillings, you know, so she could, she thought she could make some money from the mines. And she got to the mines and then the men there said, you can't work here. Why? You know, so she was confused. Is it because I'm a woman or there's a law that prohibits men from working in the mines? You know, so she went to a corner and then she observed what it was they were doing, so how they were digging and sieving all the stones and were able to pick out the precious stones. She said, look, it's not that difficult. I can do this. So what did she do? She went back, she got a ski cap to cover her hair and part of her face, replaced her skirts with trousers, Right? And then she went into the mines, disguised as a man, I started working with them. Now she walked with them, she would sit with them, drink alcohol with them, they would discuss about women, you know, in the, you know, in the village, and to them it was just a, another body, you know. And she was able to um, raise money and then went to the ministry to apply for a mining license. When she got to the ministry, she realized, look, there was actually no law for everything women from actually working in the mines, but the information was just not there. You know, and so that was how she was able to liberate herself from um, an abusive relationship, empower herself economically, and also inspire other women to come into the mining space. You know, so um, her story is pretty much like yours in a way. You encounter a lot of obstacles in the work that you do every now and then. Every, maybe you're working on a project, it looks so big you know, from the get-go, and you're wondering, look, is this something that I should you know, probably do or not? Maybe all that needs is for you to put on a different face, right? Right? Exactly. Look at it from another perspective and not be intimidated by the obstacle that is set before you. Yeah. And then there's one uh, last factor that also reassures me that rural development is possible in Africa. I recently met a group of people um, a couple of days ago, and I've been impressed by the work that they do. And I'd like to also introduce you to them as well. Okay, so please put your hands together for these new friends of mine. I just met them a couple of days ago, and I'm, I tell you, these guys are amazing. These guys are um, part of the promise um, of uh, growing Africa. And I believe that with their partnership, I believe that with their support, we really can move Africa forward. Thank you. <laughs> 